Shall we begin by? Okay, namaste everyone. Good evening. Um, today, uh, let me first um, thank HCI and Lataji for organizing this webinar. My name is Bharti, Bharti Venkatapati. I'm an uh, Ayurveda practitioner. I've been practicing in Orange County for seven years. And um, I've been asked to talk about um, the Ayurvedic perspective on um, you know, current situation that we are dealing with COVID-19. So the main um, goal today we are talking about is more than the treatment approach, it's more like preventative, which is uh, the most important point um, for us now. So focusing on some of the simple Ayurvedic measures or tips that we can probably use in our kitchen itself and see how we can keep ourselves safe uh, during this crisis. So with that, um, I also would like to, um, you know, uh, thank for all the frontline workers uh, in the medical field, or it could be the postal service, or it could be the grocers, whoever are there working out, uh, working, uh, you know, in the frontline to make sure that society works well, the fire department or the police department, everyone risking their lives outside, um, but making sure the society runs smooth. So my sincere thanks and appreciation to all the frontline workers out there. And also um, I'd like to my condolences to all the families who have either lost their uh, loved ones and um, are um, having uh, family members who are going through this crisis or uh, having um, you know, affected by this crisis. So thank you all for joining today for the joining us um, for this webinar. Again, let me introduce, uh, let you know what we will be discussing um, somehow. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So I'm sure most of um, the HCI members or the uh, community are familiar with Ayurveda. Um, but some of you who are not very familiar with Ayurveda, I'm going to just introduce you to um, the basic principles of Ayurveda that makes more sense to, before we go into the treatment approach or the, um, you know, the chicken salt treatment in Ayurveda. Um, also, I, I think um, we have some chat. Uh, I would request everyone to please mute your mics and also, if possible, um, if you can turn off your videos as well, that will be less distraction for everyone. And we'll be taking a question and answer. We have question and answer session at the end of the lecture. So I'll be really happy to answer your, any of your questions. But please hold your questions till the end. And we have a chat uh, room or chat, you know, you can uh, write your questions or the concerns, anything in the chat section. Okay. So what is Ayurveda? It's a basic, uh, um, you know, the, it's a Sanskrit term, Ayurveda, and Ayur refers to life and Veda refers to the science. So it's nothing but the science of life, or it also can relate it to science of longevity, because Ayur is also left, uh, referred to as Ayur's uh, longer life. So the science of life or longevity is um, Ayurveda, and it dates back to 5,000 years ago. I'm not going to go in detail with, uh, on Ayurveda because we're going to spend more time on the uh, main perspective today to learn um, you know, the measures to keep ourselves safe. So it dates back to 5,000 years ago and um, based on the five element theory. So we call it as Pancha Mahabhuta in Ayurveda and that being um, ether or space, air, um, uh, fire, water, and earth element. So we have got the five elements that's uh, in, in the nature, and we respond to the changes in nature, right? Um, if it's hot, you feel hot. If it is cold, you feel cooler. If it's dry, Santa Ana winds, you feel dry. That's because we also have this Mahabhutas, Pancha Mahabhutas in our body in the form of doshas, what we call it as the bioenergies. And those are called the Vata, Pitta, and Kapha probably most of you are familiar with Vat, Pitta and Kapha. So that's nothing but this bioenergies that is composed of the Mahabhutas. So um, 
knowing that we are part of this macrocosm, the nature is macrocosm, right? It's a big entity and we are just part of it. And because we are also the microcosm, we are the microcosm in the macro um, earth or the universe, I should say. So the reason that we need to know the Mahabhutas or what composition our body is made up of and what the doshas that we are made up of will only help us to understand why our body, why we um, have different um, uh, responses to the nature or why our siblings, for example, um, might have a completely different taste for food or certain, you know, dress like in some colors or whatever and their um, response to certain stimuli in nature, right? It could be um, sometimes uh, we have uh, siblings who have likings for spicy food while you might like more of a sweet taste. So why do we have certain um, so much differentiation or variation in our um, likes and dislikes, though being fed the same uh, kind of food, though being raised in the same environment. That's because our bodies, um, we have something called as body constitutions or in Ayurveda related to Prakriti. Just similar to, well, we can say loosely related to DNA in Western medicine, right? So in DNA, uh, in DNA according to the DNA profile in Western medicine, um, each person is um, uh, unique and their responses to the stimuli, their responses to diseases are all different. So we, uh, in Ayurveda, this was defined, um, pardon me for this um, misspelling there, Ayurveda, but in thousands of years ago, Ayurvedic scholars or the Vaidyas were, um, had defined this DNA as Prakriti. Right, and based on that, our, our responses are all different. You can probably relate to that in terms of what's happening with people respond with people are being affected with the virus that's going on. Right, some people are being pretty good immune and they're probably developed antibodies, while some are going um, and affect being affected very critically and are in ICU. Right. So why is that major difference? Because of the body type, because of the body constitution. And it makes so much sense that we treat it in each individual based on their body constitution. And that's what the specialization or the uniqueness in Ayurveda is we don't have one size fits all, right? There's no one particular treatment for everything. Of course, for certain diseases, we have a protocol. We say like, okay, you have to have something warm, you have to have something spicy, you have to have a spiced food, and all this just general protocol. But as an individual, you have to look at a person with um, different composition, with different body types, and say that, okay, this is a person with certain too much of uh, mucus uh, composition, and so we need to address it in a different way. And someone who has got a lot of inflammation, and that's uh, and those are the people who are really uh, bound to infections, also, right? With inflammation, infection risk factors raises. So you'll have to just define based on their body constitution, and that's uh, that's a uh, you know significance of knowing uh, the body types and do the treatment accordingly. So the cause of disease in Ayurveda is um, lack of proper cellular function. It's nothing but the harmony. Like within our um, body, we have every cell uh, cellular interactions that happens. And as long as this interaction is um, in a balanced state, in more um, uh, synchronized, right? Then we see more of harmony uh, among the tissues and element and the cells. And that helps us to keep that inflammation uh, rate low. The more disharmony we have, the more inflammation. And more inflammation means being at risk to infections, right? It's very simple uh, to understand. So that is, again, all about keeping harmony with not only within our body, but also with the nature. So you want to make sure that when we are in nature, sync with nature, very simple Vedic philosophy it is, right? Those thousands of years ago, our ancestors, they knew when the sun rises, you rise with the sun. When the sun sets and you go to bed. When the sun is strong at noon, you have your major part of the meal or big meal, main meal at lunch. So this was very simple, just follow the nature. And what we have been all this... And lately, I think in the few hundreds of a uh, couple of decades, we are just doing everything that's against our 
um, you know, bringing that harmony, right? We wait, I mean, we have 24 um, seven accessible, accessibility to everything for us. So we can wake up anytime, we can go to bed anytime because that is, you know, um, access to the computers or our uh, technology is such that you can work from anywhere at any time. And you want to connect with your uh, co-worker, uh, co-workers across the world. So it, it's kind of create a little bit of disharmony, right? And all that we are now trying to do is see what can we do to bring that balance, okay? So here is a little bit of uh, uh, pictures of different body types we are talking about. So we have Vat, Pit, and Kafam, right? This actually I was trying to research and find that even in the Western philosophy, if you look at the uh, psychology, they have ectomorph and mesomorph and endomorph related to Vat, Pit, and Kafam. So what is a type of, uh, uh, what is uh, ectomorph or a vata? It is the people who are type A personality, right? Who are always on the go. They would like to <clears throat> have everything, to, you know, a multiple task. Um, they are probably seen in multiple um, sections in the areas. They're, uh, they're the one who gets excited to start multiple things, initiators. However, they also have the challenges to stick with it. They might fall apart after a few times, few times they try and then they give up. And these are the type, and they're thin and tall and usually have dry, cha you know, dry challenges with dryness in the body, uh, constipation, insomnia. As I said, it's very inconsistent. And that's the same reason why their immune system is also uh, challenged frequently. They can fall sick very frequently. Pitta type are the five other uh, people with um, misomorph who are very well organized. They have strong fire element in them. So they have the fire to do things, to accomplish. Uh, like, you know, they want to have, you know, as I said, organize, that explains everything, right? They, uh, they are the ones who li like to have a structure in their life, right? Everything has to be you know, like in a table, timetable uh, to have do everything. That is more of a pitta type. And uh, they also enjoy a great metabolism. Um, you know, they can eat anything and still be able to digest their food. And their immune system is pretty good, um, you know, because they have fire. They pretty much burn most of the toxins and keep their immune good. The only challenge with pitta is they are, you know, they are, um, they are can actually push themselves too far and they can cause more inflammation in the body. And that's why we want to be careful with pitta, not to go out of balance and not to push too far. And kapha, as you see the picture, uh, is very stable. People are with their kapha constitution, they have a pretty much strong water and earth element in them, which means that makes them very grounded, very uh, calm, stable, right? With being stable and calm and grounded, it also helps the immune system to be more stable, which means they are good muscles, they're good strong bones, great memory, right? They're, sluggish, they're slow, uh, not self-initiators like Pitta or the Vata, but, um, you know, once they start, they're pretty consistent with it. Unlike Vata, which is inconsistent, right? So Kapha is a very consistent um, body type and the immune system, great immune system, um, but the only challenge with them is because as I said, earth and water element and which is also in, uh, which also the elements of the lungs. So the major challenge for them is respiratory system. So this is the Kapha. Uh, if you have even, can you please mute your um, mics? That will be great. So this is the kapha and a combination. And though I'm saying like Pavata, Pitta and Kapha, everyone, we are all with different body types. And, uh, you know, and we have combination of both Pitta and Vata or Pitta, Kapha. So a Pitta, Kapha combination, uh, Prakriti or body type, they, are, they really enjoy a great immune system. Though they have respiratory challenges, but being a having fire in their constitution also will help them to burn that excess meat. So that will be a great combination. Um, so epidemic diseases. So now let's understanding the basics of Ayurveda. Now, if you go to what does um, Ayurveda talk about um, regarding epidemic diseases, right? So epidemic diseases is not new to Ayurveda or to humankind. 
It's been there for thousands of years. And even in Ayurvedic classical books, uh, you see the references of epidemic diseases. And they are called bhutas, in, uh, referred to as bhutas in Ayurvedic texts. And all these bacteria or the viruses and the parasites, worms, they're all related, uh, uh, referred to as krimis. So do we have, and how do we diagnose, right? Because in Ayurveda, it's not about um, having referring to each uh, condition or uh, each eruption of this uh, viruses that we don't have. We don't go with diagnosis, right? We go with the Mahabhutas. We go with the doshas that has been affected and find the balance in this doshas to help the condition is more symptomatic. Even now with the COVID-19, we don't, we don't have any medicine to cure the disease, but we are doing symptomatic approach, right? In Ayurveda, we have the same um, approach, symptomatic approach. We look at the symptoms. We look where the symptoms are, are coming from. What is the source of those symptoms? What elements are predominant in those source? Right when you talked about lungs, respiratory system is a major kind of organ or system that has been affected with the COVID-19. So, what is the elements in respiratory system? Earth and water element, kapha. So that's what we are going to treat. We also have understood over the years from the Western medicine also that your respiratory system is um, affected with the gut, gut, uh, uh, your um, stomach, digestive system. Right. So, if your digestive system is inflamed it can affect your respiratory system. So thousands of years ago, again, in Ayurveda, whatever respiratory system therapies that we have recommended, we, we start from the gut, we start from Agni or the digestive system, right? So if you are going to actually correlate or relate to what the Western approach now is with the COVID-19 and what Ayurveda has been talked about, I mean, has talked about the epidemic diseases thousands of years ago, very much relates to. Right. I would say a little bit more elaboratively and more specific to people than uh, uh, generalized uh, approach. So viruses, as you know, it is not a living thing, right? It's a protein. So it only once it comes in contact with your body, uh, the mucosal lining and the oxygen, and that's when it is uh, it multiplies or it causes all the imbalances. Otherwise, it is a non-living thing. So. In Ayurveda, viruses are probably can be related to, um, we call it as Agan Tuja, which means the factors that are affected, are affecting the body from external source, right? The bacteria, of course, we call it are related to internal causative factors, that is, um, you know, uh, Nadija or Baya and Abhyantara. Abhyantara is internal, so that's caused because of the internal um, uh, in microbes or the bacteria. Agantuja or the ba here is the one that is caused because of the external agent. And this is the virus we are looking at. So the symptomatic approach based on strength of the disease um, and the person affected. So as I said, it is based on what symptoms are affected. And you might also, by now we know that not everybody are exhibiting similar symptoms though respiratory system is a main system that's been affected, but other associated symptoms are all varying in different degrees. And we do sometimes uh, people have low degree temperature, but still having uh, exhibiting uh, symptoms of COVID-19. For some, the fever is like 104, 105 for four or five days continuously. And for some, we have like 99 degrees to 100 degrees, low grade and lasting longer. So, Again, that is based on the strength of the disease. Our approach, Ayurvedic approach, will be based on the strength of the disease and the strength of the person that's been, who's been affected, right? So as I said earlier, the kapha constitution people have strong, great energy. They are also the pitta, pitta and kapha. Excuse me. So pitta and kapha people have great energy and um, met great uh, immune system. So they probably may not exhibit all the symptoms of COVID-19, of, of the virus, I would, I would say as virus. So they may not exhibit all the symptoms, but their respiratory system might be a little bit affected and they might, not, they might be able to fight off um, but, you know, easier than compared to other body types. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand the person's um, strength and the strength of the disease. That's what we call it as Roga Bala and Rogi Bala. Roga refers to disease, Bala refers to the strength. So disease, uh, uh, strength of the disease and Rogi Bala, strength of the person or the patient. So um, 
back then in the classics, we see that they followed the personal hygiene. Right, what I've been mean, uh, um, requested to do now or been uh, recommended now is social distancing. We have been recommended to wash your hands, right? 20 seconds, wash your hands well. We have been asked to, I um, mean, re recommended to have uh, hot fluids. So all this has been in classical texts, personal hygiene. They always made sure that before you walk into the house from outside, when they had this epidemic, um, you know, um, uh, Arabs. So it was um, recommended that they wash their hands and feet, not only just with plain water, but warm water. They used neem leaves and turmeric, um, you know, very widely used back then. Um, they used to uh, have neem leaves tied to the door entrance or into uh, 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 door entrance. Uh, so then they can prevent most of the viruses or microbes getting into the house, right? So, and they had turmeric around the uh, in, in the front of their house on the floor. So this was again to prevent any kind of viral entrance into the houses. When they have to cook, they bathed. They make sure that they bathe and not only just washing their hands, but taking a bath before you cook. And warm meals all three uh, times of the day. And how lucky and fortunate are, uh, of us that we have the luxury, we are home, staying home and fighting this disease, right? So we are, have the luxury and time of time and probably also the energy to cook uh, hot meals for us all. And um, yeah, so that will be more like a op great opportunity than a punishment, staying home and having warm meals. Um, so that's about freshly cooked spiced warm meals and uh, turmeric and neem uh, widely used and spiritual and emotional support. So there was a lot of uh, support, emotional support. We talked, uh, uh, now we have psychologists um, great, um, and uh, great service from the psychologists and, uh, and the psychiatrists helping us with um, emotional support. And back then there was there were spiritual uh, support. There were chanting, meditation, and uh, prayers were all were done. And uh, just like what we're seeing, even in the Hindu temples or in the churches or um, you know uh, other places for uh, mass, or the the priests are doing prayers for us, right? They are worshiping for the you know for the healing for the universe. So they had the similar um, things in uh, back then. They were constantly having this homas or the fire ceremonies for universal uh, healing. So um, the similar approach, I just wanted to share like what's been talked about in classics in Vedic um, literatures and what we are still following now with that current situation. So what are the um, basic part, like what can we um, adopt now, right? Bitter taste. And even in the Western microbi microbiologists have um, talked about how bitter taste can actually inhibit the viral activity in our body. And that's all we are saying, like all the Ayurvedic herbs that are being talked about have been um, all bitter herbs, bitter and lipid pungent herbs, right? So we want to make sure that not too much of sweet, not too much of um, uh, too much drying, but more of bitter and uh, pungent. Um, so gut health um, influences respiratory system, as I mentioned earlier. So we have, um, we want to make sure that we don't eat too greasy food, too heavy food, right? We want to make sure that the gut is doing its work by clearing the toxins on a regular basis. You don't want to overload your fire. Just imagine the fire in the fireplace. If you want to have a strong fire, and healthy fire in the fireplace, you definitely want to add healthy, like warm, lighter fuel to the, in the fire so that you can keep it going strong. As if you just dump heavy wet log on the fire, it dies, right? Same concept, Agni in our gut. If you want to keep that fire going, so lighter, warm fuels, and um, you know, hopefully, I mean, preferably, uh, we also want to do like a little bit mild fasting, right? That will also help your gut to do its function on digesting and providing the proper nutrition that is required now, and also be able to eliminate the toxins periodically, right? On regular basis, I should say more regular basis, cleansing ourselves. When you load ourselves with too much of heavy food, greasy food, then it's too much taxing. And then your immune system, which needs to be more on a, a high alert now that will be the energy will be driven more to digest that heavy food than to keep up your immune. 
So maintain healthy stomach lining, which means the inflammation, people with um, um, inflammatory disorders of the gut, of the stomach, like acidity, or it could be Crohn's disease, or it could be um, any kind of irritable bowel syndrome where they have some irritability in their lining. So we need to make sure that we protect that. We, um, you know, uh, predict proper uh, treatments to help to, um, you know, keep it more uh, healthier. So then we don't create more, uh, um, you know, environment for the viruses to attach. So we want to keep the stomach lining as healthy as possible. And which means, again, avoid any processed foods. And this is a great time, limited grocery. So you have, you can limit your healthy shopping. Yeah, okay. Um, so the, the approach here, as I said earlier, is immune, your immune system. You have to make sure that your immunity is strong and work on your respiratory system, making sure the respiratory system is as healthy as possible we can manage, and a digestion. These are the three key factors. We have multiple other areas that we work on based on what's happening with each individual, as I said earlier, body types, it all matters. But in general, these are the three main areas that we need to um, work on. Sorry, uh, the previous one, OGIS, is referred to as immune system, and it's a very loose term to use as immune system because it's much more a description of OGIS in classics. It is the essence of all the tissues in our body, right, from the plasma tissue to the reproductive tissue. It's an essence, it's well-protected entity in our body, so we need to, let's say immune, so we need to um, take care of that. Um, from Ayurvedic perspective, um, the main goal in Ayurveda, uh, as the shloka says, swasasya swastarakshanam aturasya roganut. So this is the goal of Ayurveda for life, right? And what does swasasya swastarakshanam means? As it very clearly says, maintain the health of a healthy individual. So preventive med medicine, you can consider Ayurveda as also a preventive medicine. So maintain the health of a healthy person and arthurasi roganut, which means to also help to treat the diseases or the ailments. That's a secondary goal. So even with this current situation, we always say, you know, uh, prevention is better than cure, right? So they are taking the measures now. We're learning a little bit on how we can take care of, uh, we can do the preventive measures to stay healthy. And that is done with, uh, in, I, in the classics, it's talked about dinacharya and rutucharya which means like by following your daily routines, uh, appropriate routines during the daytime, and also the seasonal routines, which means like each season, uh, we have different elements predominant, and that's why we have different uh, seasons, right? So with that, uh, different elements um, or characteristics, I should say, for each season, we have different characteristics. Hey, uh, rain, which is, Nice and pleasant we had in California in the last two weeks, so it is nice and grounded. Um, it's uh, cold in summer; it is hot. In uh, fall, it is um, dry. Vata season, right? So we have different elements predominant in each season. Based on those uh, predominant elements, we want to uh, adopt um, certain routines and food that isn't conducive, which means it makes it is in harmony with that elements in the nature. So then we create that um, synchronized in the body too. Okay, so that is the rutucharya. So uh, again, with the routines, we have few components. There's multiple others that we have talked about, but some, uh, the main ones would be yoga, pranayama, meditation, oil pulling, and steam. This is, I would say, in general, for most of us, you know, uh, no matter which body type, what body type you belong to, but this is uh, basic guidelines for everyone. Um, and as we talked today, like um, I just found out that even um, the government of Karnataka has incorporated Ayurveda in the treatment of COVID-19. Um, so that is really encouraging. And it talks a lot about how um, we are seeing the growth or the uh, you know, um, appreciation of the ancient system of medicine in India. Uh, so the, this is a second state. So the first state is Kerala, which um, has embraced Ayurveda into its mainstream uh, to treat the viral situation. And uh, as of yesterday or uh, a couple of days, we found that um, when Karnataka government of Karnataka has adopted Ayurveda into its mainstream, treating people with um, Ayurveda. So 
Um, I'll go in detail with each of those. Um, so with yoga, um, you know, I'm just going to uh, go with what with the current situation and um, based on that certain recommendations for each of those. Um, in general routines, um, you know, we can talk, um, probably, we can learn a little bit more on the seasonal routine and uh, daily routine, um, you know, later, but for current situation, these are some of the recommendations. So as we said, respiratory system is a main one that has been main system that gets affected. So also your digestive system. So uh, any kind of asanas which helps with opening your chest cavity, right? Enhancing your lung capacity. Those are the great ones. Surya Namaskar in general, I think it's great to work on all the systems. Uh, if you want to go specific, some of them, um, you know, Bhujangasana, Ustrasana, Matsyasana, Dhanurasana, everywhere where we are opening up the chest and uh, you know, enhancing our lung capacity. So those are all great. Um, and thank you for um, uh, Ranjini Antis yesterday's great session on pranayama. Um, it was excellent. And uh, some of them that we learned yesterday was also the Kapalbhati and uh, Brahmari and Nadi Shodhan pranayama. So Kapalbhati is again, it helps in getting rid of excess and uh, the toxins from the lungs and at the same time giving enough uh, chance to inhale more oxygen, right? It enhances that lung capacity. So the same thing, Bhastrika, um, which helps in with your digestive system as well as your respiratory system. Brahmari, it helps with stimulating your hypothalamus, great for the immune system, as well as during this time, we all know that we are having these challenges with anxiety, and I mean, as much as we want to get, be informed, try not to be too um, you know, addicted to listening to the news too much. That also affects our immune system. We don't want that, you know, too much of that uh, uh, anxious provoking, anxiety provoking news. So uh, I think Brahmari will help a lot. It also enhances the serotonin in our brain. So great for depression and anxiety during this time. Nadi Shodhan, which is alternate nostril breathing, which um, helps in balancing both your sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic nervous system helps in enhancing or uh, stimulating your actions, activities, right? And our energy and parasympathetic is more calming and cooling. So it also kind of balances both. So a great routine to do pranayama, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, or if you have more time, maybe half an hour time to do the pranayama. Meditation, of course, we have studied and a lot of works. I mean, uh, we have um, research works that shows that meditation does help to not only to enhance our serotonin, but also enhances your immune system and also healing. So if you can spend some time meditate with meditation, that would be great. If you're not very much into yoga or with has some limitations, then just walking in nature, I call it what, uh, vitamin N. N. N is nothing but nature, right? And that can be a best therapy. I know they had to still do our social distancing, respecting the social distancing, and still um, get out there if you have a backyard or a front yard to just get there and get, you know, just soak yourself in that. Um, uh, soak yourself with uh, the uh, nature, with uh, all the elements in nature, right? Uh, enjoy that smell, enjoy that cool breeze, enjoy the vibrant colors of the flowers now it's flowering, so, and the greenery that we have after the rain, right? So enjoy every uh, element in the nature now. And oil massage, um, uh, in Ayurveda, we call it as Abhyanga. So Abhyanga helps with, um, you know, not, it's not just a skin rub or not to just soften your skin or to oleate your skin, but also um, uh, enhances your lymphatic drainage, which means it uh, helps to detox your system. At the same time, enhances your immune system or just in the body. Okay, so you can use sesame or almond or if you have coconut oil, that's fine. So any warm oil, make sure it is warm. And have this as a routine in the morning. You know, you wake up in the morning and you use brush your teeth and you swish. I have talked about uh, swishing, so make, making sure that you swish your um, yes, yeah, so, I mean swish for uh, uh, maybe 15 minutes. That's 15 to 20 minutes. That's a long time, but start with two minutes. Start how much ever you can. Never push yourself with yoga or breathing or any of these routines. Have it as a routine, not a chore. 
okay? So switching with a teaspoon, just a warm, tea, a warm uh, oil in a teaspoon, uh, uh, just a teaspoon measurement, uh, how much ever your mouth is capable of just holding. So just hold it and then switch for a few minutes and spit it out, right? And then you gargle with some warm water. And if possible, if you can add a little bit of salt um, and turmeric, so turmeric has the ability as uh, a property of antimicrobial and also antiviral. So it helps in getting rid of any kind of inflammation or, and also anti-inflammatory, sorry. So that also helps in reducing any inflammation in the throat. So the orifices that are uh, for the, as a, a, well, acts as an entry point for the virus is your mouth, your nose, and sometimes even your eyes, right? Anywhere we have the mucosal lining. So we want to make sure that your oral cavity is and has a great you know, balanced pH and, and no inflammation in the mouth and moist. When it's excess dryness, it causes inflammation, excess dry, in, uh, dryness to inflammation. So an inflammation is a good seed for the viral infections, right? So keep the more mouth oral cavity moist. And for the, uh, and the, this is some of the suggestions also by the government of I mean, the health department in um, India, Ayush, uh, which is Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, and, um, homeo uh, and homeopathy. So according to their suggestions, I have incorporated their suggestions as well here. So even the Ayush department also recommends to do the swishing, uh, gargle, and steam inhalation. Right. So when you do, um, you can put some eucalyptus oil in the warm tub or if you have a steamer uh, for the facial steam I'm talking about. So you can put some mint essential oil or if you have fresh mint, just throw in some fresh mint and inhale and take the steam. Right. And that also helps with you know, congestion, any kind of accumulation of the mucus and that helps to get rid of that. Um, and uh, we were talking about nasya. Uh, the nose drops. So if you're familiar with Nasya, it's a, a therapy that we do in Ayurveda, um, instilling some, a couple of drops or a few drops of oil, this herbal oil that we instill in the nostrils to help to maintain the moisture in the nostrils. Also, we have oils which can help in reducing inflammation in the nostrils and congestion. People with sinus congestion, they're a little bit more prone to get have these infections, um, they attract for more infections. So we want to keep sure, make sure that the sinuses are all clear. So you have nasya. If you're not familiar with that, um, no problem. You can just dip your little finger, make sure that the nails are cut and clean and dip your little finger in warm sesame oil and apply in the inner nostrils gently and just give a nice rub right um the nostrils and that is also can be done on a regular basis and the other main routine other than the food part which we'll be discussing a bit later is sleep making sure that you have at least eight hours of sleep um if you're going to get by get to bed by 9 30 10 and you know 5 30 to 6 o'clock in the morning that's a good sleep sleep is very essential it is during this time that your body detoxifies as well as rejuvenates. So we don't want to compromise the sleep quality, not only the hours, but also the quality of sleep. Okay, and now coming to the food. I will be taking the questions. Um, uh, hopefully we'll finish up soon in 10 minutes and then I'll take the questions. So if you have questions, just hold on and we can take the questions later on. So food. Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, ahara or food is a big part, right? It is a main uh, pillar in Ayurveda. So you are what we, we are what we eat, right? So whatever we put in our mouth is how you feel, how you think, how you, the emotion aspect as well is, uh, depends on the food we eat. <clears throat> so start your day with a glass of warm herbal tea. I would say like, you know, brush your teeth, you did a gargle, um, about that. So you gargle and you do all this morning routine and you come to the kitchen, have a glass of hot water. If you have tulsi in the garden or holy basil, you get tea bags now. Add a little bit of tulsi in it and some lemon juice, ginger, turmeric, and maybe even a little bit of peppercorn. <clears throat> and let it steep. Steep for five, 10 minutes, right? And then you drink that. That helps, you have got all the antioxidants here. You have got immunomodulator, Tulsi being a great immunomodulator. Uh, lemon juice with uh, high vitamin C. 
ginger is highly recommended in ayurveda for not only your gut um, health but also <coughs> excuse me but also helps with your respiratory system right it helps in getting rid of excess accumulation of mucus and turmeric as we all know is an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant uh, great for the respiratory system so that will be the combination <coughs> excuse me and that's why we need to keep sipping, sipping on the hot water <laughs> to keep our throat uh, more, uh, moist so favor whole grains as much as possible um, try not to do too much of processed foods or too um, you know simple um, simple or uh, um, carbohydrates try as much as possible with the whole grains avoid anything heavy and greasy we already discussed about we want to make sure that agni is strong your digestive fire is strong so avoid anything which is heavy and greasy <clears throat> So consistent with the meal times that make sure that the Agni, remember keep the Agni in your mind and the fire in the fireplace. You need to keep that fuel going to keep that fire strong. So don't, you know, don't, or sometimes we wait, if someone wakes up at 10 o'clock and then some day five o'clock or two o'clock, that inconsistency doesn't help, right? We want that, that puts down the fire, that puts down the digestive enzymes. So we want to keep that consistency with warm foods. Well hydration with, uh, and, and just hot water, sipping on the hot water or the herbal teas. It can be any herbal tea other than tulsi. If you want to have tulsi through the day, that's great. Just boil some tulsi in a hot pot, in a big pot of water and just sip on that through the day. That's great. It's uh, good for respiratory and anti um, and good for the immune system as well. So kitchari or simple light meals, just as I said earlier, keep your meals lighter, not overload. So even kitchari is a simple uh, diet, which is very pranic in nature and also good for the ojas. And um, if you want to do like a 12 hour fasting, which means you, wake, you have your dinner by six or seven and then do not eat until six or seven the next day morning. So that is a great time for your body to cleanse and to um, you know, rejuvenate. I had just given you a recipe of rasam. Uh, it's not a typical traditional recipe, but just for someone who is not very familiar with the recipe, uh, um, you know, just boiling all these uh, ingredients, garlic, cumin, black pepper, a bit of tomatoes um, and cilantro and seasoning with turmeric, curry leaves and mustard seeds. So this is a great, you have combination of everything, which is antiviral, antibacterial, you got immune enhancing and cooling as well, right? So, um, if uh, you know uh, some of you, if you are familiar with rasam, make sure that you have at least one cup of rasam um, with the rice or by itself every day. Um, some of the vegetables and um, fruits I mentioned here: Brussels sprouts, broccoli, radishes, kale, chard. Most of it is on vegetables. You see that they're all bitter in nature, um, antioxidants, and also with the broccoli, um, you know, it has a um, chemical compound which actually helps in inhibiting uh, viral activity in the body. So Brazil sprouts and broccoli are great for that reason. So is a radish. Um, fruits, citrus fruits mainly, and a lot of berries with antioxidants. Snacks, try to limit the snacks to as um, healthy as possible and not do too much of fried and um, too fancy snacks. Again, I guess as I said, you don't want to load your stomach or digestion with uh, uh, you know, food that needs a lot of energy to digest. Okay, so keep the snacks as healthy as possible. And some of the spices that um, I would like to share here is um, that you can use in the tea form or like in the hot water or you can just use it in your cooking. So you have cumin, a wide range of spices actually. Uh, cumin, turmeric, by the way, turmeric is uh, fat soluble. So best if you can use it in cooking and that's how you can absorb the curcumin in the turmeric. Um, and, but also if you add a little bit of you know, ghee or coconut oil, anything of oil meteor in the water as well when you're making the drink, that also helps in absorbing it. Black pepper um, also enhances the absorption of curcumin, ginger, garlic, antiviral, 
property of garlic. So even if you want to saute a little bit of garlic cloves in ghee and turmeric, right? And you can, and if you don't have acidity or burden in digestion, and if you're not sensitive to the immune, uh, to the spices, um, you can actually have two of those sorted garlic every day. And that helps with the combating any kind of infections. Um, onion, fenugreek, mint, ajwan, fennel, say, uh, fennel, um, cloves, sorry, cinnamon, <clears throat> um, oregano oil, uh, oregano oil also you get, essential oils, but also you get as a, as a uh, herb, so you can use that in your cooking. So these are all the spices that is great uh, in food as well as in the teas. Um, I request everyone to, uh, some of you, I think whoever has a mic on, can you please mute it? Thank you. So Chavan, uh, some of the herbs that are recommended um, by the government of, uh, I mean, the Ayush uh, department in India and also that we have seen over in the classics is um, Chavan Prash. Chavan Prash is loaded with vitamin C. It is nothing but Indian gooseberry. So if you can have a teaspoon once or twice a day, that is great. And it's not that hard to find online. You can definitely order it online if you don't have it. Um, it's an Indian gooseberry, as I said, antioxidants and vitamin C. So great to boost your immune. Trika 2 is a combination of black pepper, ginger, and a long pepper. So this is great to keep our digestion good to maintain our digestion so that we burn our uh, toxins or we get rid of the to uh, burn of food, digest of food and also get rid of the toxins and also helps in reducing any excess mucus in our body. So a half teaspoon around meals can be done. If you don't have trick or two, just add a little bit of black pepper and ginger in your tea in hot water along with uh, cumin, coriander, fennel, and then have it around meals. That also is good, okay? And we have um, the other herb uh, com or formula, I would say, is Sitopaladi, very known Ayurvedic formulation. Great for the respiratory system, also helps with a uh, gastric um, or, or the GI uh, for your digestion as well. So with, especially if you have uh, developing a little bit of cough, a little bit of mucus, sinus, cold, just start drinking and making a tea of Sitopaladi powder. Yeah, you can take it multiple times in a day, two, three times, or even four, five times as needed, uh, sipping on it through the day. Mahasudarshan Ganavati is one more formula that we have um, uh, that uh, helps with abating fever or managing fever, um, body ache. As I said, like if it is low grade and it's going to 9,900, 9, you can still manage with that, but I would definitely <clears throat> recommend if you're seeing high temperature and being consistent, please seek you know, medical uh, uh, advice. Um, but this is again, as I said, more on a prevention and mild symptoms, management of mild symptoms. Ashwagandha and Brahmi are the great adaptogens, um, great for people with anxiety, kind of helps to calm the system. And ashwagandha is a great immunomodulator as well, enhances it, it boosts up your immune. And Brahmi as well is known to help both with the respiratory system as well as with the mind right and sleep so if people are having challenges to fall asleep with this given crisis i understand it is not easy um, with the keeping our you know um, keeping ourselves more composed so you can use ashwagandha or brahmi to help with you with your sleep at night uh, this is an ayush recommendation herbal tea um, made with tulsi cinnamon black pepper ginger raisins it's called manuka in uh, ayurveda and has uh, great benefits on um, you know with the immune as well as with the uh, viral activity cloves so these are all as uh, a combination of all this um, if you can take it with some lemon juice if need be or jaggery or if you can just handle it by itself great have it uh, once or twice in a day okay so that is the recommended uh, formula and to a golden milk we are all familiar with that for many years they've been having this turmeric powder with a, in hot milk and if somebody is uh, sensitive to um, lactose um, you can just have the tea that we recommended earlier right the tulsi and the cinnamon and the turmeric and everything so that can be used as well some of the vitamins that probably um, needed don't have to load yourself with every vitamin out there 
Um, just uh, more essential is vitamin D because we are so much now bound inside in our homes and not able to get enough of uh, sunlight. So make sure that you get vitamin D. Vitamin D is also a great immune booster. So um, 2000 international units per day. Um, it's good to keep that going. And vitamin C, if you're not, if you don't have amalaki, if, not have, uh, if you're not getting enough of lemon or citric juice, um, you can take up to um, you know, th vitamin C, 1000 to 3000 milligrams per day. Um, if you're getting your lemon juice and have amalaki with you, you don't need much of that vitamin, I mean supplement. Zinc is um, known as yeshad or jeshad in Ayurveda. For thousand, I mean, in literatures also we see that as a great uh, supplement or the mineral that is helped uh, in the infectious uh, diseases. Um, so 15 to 25 milligrams per day is a great uh, dose to take. Um, so if you are uh, good with um, lemons and citric, then you can just do vitamin D and zinc um, as a main supplement to help in preventive. Okay, so summarizing, you know, we have all the spices we talked about, the teas that you can make out of it or use it in cooking and golden milk. Great to have that on a regular basis um, unless you have your lactose intolerant. Uh, warm fluids, as much as possible, try to avoid, not as much as I would say completely avoid any cold drinks or food. Uh, swishing and gargle we talked about, steam and nasya. If you're not used to nasya, just application of oil in your nostrils. And the most important of all this is to keep our mind and bodies in sync, right? Through yoga, pranayama, and meditation. So with that, I would like to conclude with a prayer and um, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makashit Dukabhag Bhavet. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Let there be peace and let there be healing everywhere. And uh, prayers and um, uh, hope that we all come out even more stronger from this situation. And let's uh, create a healthy and a healing community among ourselves and help out each other. And um, as I said, we're all there for each other. Okay, namaste. Thank you. And is that <clears throat> Bharti, there are a few questions online. I'm going to just pick the questions. Uh, so on golden milk, uh, do we heat the golden milk with turmeric or do we heat the milk first and then stir in the, the healthy powder? Oh, you can actually boil. You can boil uh, turmeric. Like you can uh, you use like a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of turmeric uh, in milk and boil it and use that. Yes. Okay, put it into milk. Okay, why soak nuts? Are regular nuts okay? Uh, regular nuts because it's more drying and that's why we want to create more moisture, right? That's the real, whole purpose is all to, to, to maintain the moisture in the body and that's the reason we want to use more, uh, uh, um, you know, soak well, nuts. Nikhilji's question is, is Kalmeg and Neem used as a preventative for malaria, which are because they're bitter? Will this yeah. help with COVID prevention? And what about Giloy and Guruji? Yes, uh, so, um, so we have that formulations that we had, we have Guruji in it as well. Amrita or Guruji is a best one for fever as well as for any viral infections. Yes, absolutely. If you have single herb, you can order the leaves. I think in India we have uh, Guruji leaves, fresh leaves. So you can actually make a decoction or just eat a, you know, a leaf of Guruji every day, every morning. All right. And for healthy milk, uh, can you substitute coconut milk for milk milk? Uh, we want to avoid as much as possible any processed uh, drinks, uh, including almond milk, unless you're making almond milk at home, that's fine. Otherwise, uh, try to avoid anything too processed. So you can do it with uh, water and um, maybe a little bit of coconut oil in it should be okay, but not too much of processed foods. Lathaji, can you just pick up the other questions? Okay, hold on one second. Oh, well, I'll, I'll ask, which oil is the best for oil pulling? Which oil? Um, so there are two oils that we major, uh, majorly using now is coconut oil and sesame oil. Um, coconut oil, uh, sesame oil has a benefit of being a good source for the calcium as well, a good uh, you know, calcium res uh, resource. So uh, I would suggest uh, sesame oil, but coconut oil is anti-inflammatory too because of the cooling uh, property. So you can use coconut oil. It's also, if someone has a little bit sensitivity in the mouth, you can use coconut oil. But make sure it is warm though. 
hmm? not too cold. Okay, is it okay for um, one second? Okay, I am on then. Okay, one second. I lost that. Uh... <clears throat> like everything else, um, no, no, me... no. just go up. Uh, just just ask for. Okay, is it okay for Pita? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay for Pita type people to have much hot food? Have so much hot food? <laughs> That's a good question. So for pita, we want to make sure that we don't uh, create too much heat in them, right? And that's why we want a little bit of cooling too. Like tulsi is tulsi can be along with um, pepper and and lemon. It can be a little bit warming. So just watch out if you're feeling a little bit of uh, too much heat. Add some mint. Mint is a bit cooling for pita. So if you want to uh, make this herbal teas, add a little bit of mint in your daily um, teas. So that will uh, reduce the excess uh, heat in for pita people. Okay, then there's a question on the PDF for presentation. I'll leave Gauraji to answer that later. How to keep stomach lining healthy? Can we use have ghee? Ghee is a great one. Uh, ghee is a ghee herbs and even uh, licorice, eshtimadu. I didn't mention that on the list. I can we can add that licorice or eshtimadu uh, is also great for um, stomach lining. It creates a mucilaginous uh, lining, so that is good and also good for respiratory system. So even for um, pitta people, as we mentioned in the previous question, if you're having too much of heat problems with all the spices, add a little bit of licorice as well. Yeah, licorice is um, kind of reduces too much pitta. What do people, pitta uh, people uh, avoid? With high pitta people, what do they avoid? Uh, see, the thing is with black pepper, uh, it might be a little bit heating, but also with madhura vipak, it kind of combats the excess heat. And instead of the dry ginger, they can use fresh ginger. Um, and as I said, uh, if it is too much of heat, you can add a little bit of mint to reduce the excess heat. So I wouldn't say there's nothing that you can want to completely avoid, excess for the you know, steam. If, you, if it's giving you eucalyptus oil is too heating for you, then you may want to use mint leaves for the steam. So it's uh, uh, places where you can substitute. Definitely you can do those. Does lemon juice can be taken daily? Okay, so there's a difference a little bit with lemon and lime. Um, if you have too much pitta, I mean, yeah, you can have lemon, but you can also substitute with lime because it's less um, acidic. It's madura vipaka, so you can also use uh, lime in between. So then you don't feel like it's too much of heat that's you know, bothering you. I know this is probably a repeat question. Is olive oil okay for swishing? Um, again, olive oil is a bit warming. Uh, and for that reason, um, I mean, there is no harm, I would say, but uh, see, see if you can do with uh, sesame or coconut. Okay. If we don't have trikatu or sito paladi, etc., yes. what can be used as a substitute? Okay. So uh, this, as I said, sito um, paladi is mainly when you're having cough and cold and to help to um, you know, um, manage those symptoms. This is not done on a regular basis. You don't have to do sitopaladi and thalisadi on, on a regular basis to prevent. Um, so of course, when you have cough and cold, um, you, know, you have um, even, uh, black pepper is pretty good and tulsi is pretty good for the cough. And if you have licorice powder, not the licorice candy, but the licorice powder. So that is also pretty good to manage the cough and cold. Okay, Sadhguru talks about drinking a combination of neem, turmeric, and honey in warm water. Is that something you would recommend? Yes, absolutely. Neem is also cooling and it's also antiviral and turmeric. And if you're adding ginger to that, that's a great uh, combination too. Yes, absolutely. That is a good one. Where can we buy Brahmi? Brahmi can be bought. Uh, I mean, if you're in US, uh, it's um, Banyan Botanicals have it, and there are a couple, a couple of other organi I mean, companies. Um, they have organic, and if you had to get from Amazon, I think that's also uh, you can get it on Amazon as long as it's organic. Uh, it's good, Brahmi. I think Mother's Kitchen has it too. Pardon me? Mother's Kitchen has it too, I've seen it. Mother's Kitchen, yeah. But I'm, I was just referring to the companies, uh, the brands. How do you identify your body from the different doshas, vata, pita, or kapha? I think you talked about that a little bit, but I think yeah. I don't know if that's a short answer or a long answer. 
Yeah, so Bhavata Pitan Kafa, as I said earlier, I just gave you a little bit, um, you know, a brief introduction on how, what the responses and how their challenges are. So Vata is someone who's always, who's like usually lean and tall and, uh, you know, challenges with dryness, um, you know, unable to, you know, focus on one thing. There's always so many uh, tasks lined up for them. They like, they thrive on uh, multiple tasks, right? They get easily bored. So those are the ta Vata type. The pitta are the ones who are like they like to take challenges. Um, they they love to solve things. Uh, they, they are the you know um, uh, what do you call um, uh, well organized, um, uh, very disciplined people. Um, and they are also ones who call, have challenges with inflammation, as I said earlier. So that is more of a pitta personality. Where kapha would be the ones uh, who is uh, um, mostly on the heavy side. Uh, hard to lose weight, uh, easy to gain weight, um, and digestion is a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow, but they, they're pretty consistent with whatever they do emotionally and physically. They are pretty, very, very well consistent and good, strong bones. So that's what the kappa. Um, I, I, think, I think that can be a little bit if that helps. Can we use dry tulsi for fresh tulsi? So uh, let me just As go back to one more minute on that. But yeah. It's just the physical appearances I gave you and their mental attitudes, uh, mental attributes, sorry. Uh, but we, in Ayurvedic, uh, you know, uh, practitioner, we actually check the pulse and the tongue diagnosis and all this to completely, you know, get a better idea of the prakriti or the constitution. So this is just in general to know. Uh, tulsi, dry and wet. Of course, wet tulsi or the fresh leaves is the best. Uh, you can actually help, um, I mean, you get the essence of the tulsi in the fresh leaves, no doubt about it. You can also make juice, fresh uh, tulsi juice with the pestle and mortar and have that, that is more potent. So it's only the potency is a bit different. And also the fresh tulsi is more um, soothing and uh, cooling, not cooling, I would say less heating compared to the dry ones. So if somebody who's sensitive to dry heat, uh, you may want to do the fresh tulsi. Is consuming honey on daily basis good for health? Uh, so this, uh, repeat that question, please. Consuming honey. Oh, honey. Um, yeah, I again, mean, it comes to uh, honey is okay to have it. Make sure that it is not used, uh, not um, added when it's boiling. We don't, we, ne we never boil or heat the honey. You just add when you're drinking the um, tea. Um, again, honey might be too heating for a pitta person, for someone who has got too much inflammation. Um, so you may skip honey um, in that situation. Otherwise, um, honey is good. You can take that. It also helps in reducing excess mucus and too much of kapha. <clears throat> what what's, is ashtamadhi? Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, for you. What is ashtamadhu? Yeshti madhu. Yeshti madhu is licorice. Madhu. It's, it's licorice. Okay. But, okay, so somebody is asking what that is. What is that? It's, it's an herb that uh, we use uh, in respiratory, uh, respiratory disorders. And also because it, um, it's a demulcent, which means it creates a um, healthy lining in the mucosal lining. So it's also used for gut inflammation in your digestive system. What is trikut? What, what is what? Trikut. T-R-I-K-U-T. Oh, Trikatu. I think it's Trikatu. Trikatu is a combination of a long pepper, pipali, if you know about pipali, and maricha is a black pepper, and kunku or ginger. It's a combination of all the three, which is great for digestion and also to reduce excess mucus and uh, for the um, uh, toxins. What so is the substitute a, for? Okay, go ahead, Sanmay. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just quick question. I had to get this through. Um, yeah. there, there's always a debate about when to have breakfast and what should be the breakfast, specifically people, you know, living in the West, because there's a there's one side talking about heavy breakfast, the other side, the yogic side, is talking about light breakfast because of the kapha time, you know, six to ten and all that stuff. So what what is your recommendation? What's your view on that? I would say based on the person's digestive um, ability, right? If someone who can wake up in the morning and they are hungry, yes, definitely have some warm, uh, light breakfast. 
Um, but if um, you know, for a kafa individual who are who uh, don't really feel hungry in the morning, just have some light teas, herbal teas, to help to stimulate the agni. So it's not just one guideline for everyone. Um, I would say based on each person's digestive ability, uh, go with that and agni. Uh, for especially for a pitta constitution, for a person who has got a great metabolism, they definitely uh, you know, uh, need to have some food in the, uh, for breakfast, definitely a lighter breakfast in the morning. Otherwise they might have other challenges with headache and um, dizziness and all that. So yes, uh, for a vata and the pitta per, uh, per constitution, we usually recommend to have some light warm uh, breakfast. What is a substitute for guruchi leaves? Guruchi leaves, a uh, substitute for guruchi leaves. Um, you can have the neem. Neem is also antiviral. Um, and um, uh, if you don't have uh, neem, you get the Sudarshana tablets that is uh, easily available. You can use that. Um, Tulsi. Tulsis are good. It's both uh, for fever and for immune system. That's also a good substitute. Can I put neem oil in boiled water and drink? Uh, no, I wouldn't suggest to have neem oil uh, because I don't think we get any pure form of neem oil to use it. Um, so we don't want to add it in the water, but neem uh, powder is okay. Neem leaves, if you have fresh, that's great, but not the oil. Mm -hmm. Oil. Any, suggestion, any suggestion for post-nasal drip related coughing and tickle at the back of the throat? Yeah, so the swishing we talked about, right? The swishing and the gargle, those are the great, great okay. ones because it gives you a good massaging effect in the, in the mouth and any kind of the constant dribbling will help uh, to relieve that. And I have seen with clients when they do the gargle and swishing on a regular basis, they do not um, you know, have that accumulation overnight and then they have this you know, and not having the challenge of dribbling through the day. Um, also, Nasya, I talked about the nose drops. That also is a great one to do the uh, do on regular basis. Nathi, Nasya, they're all great. Yeah, just about three, four more. Kalmeg was used for pandemics in India in the past. Correct. Is that true? Absolutely. Yes. And it's hard to find that herb, um, the scarcity with that herb. Um, um, it's hard to find it here in US, but I'm sure they're using that in the formulas. Ayush 64 is one of the formulations that they have now to treat the viral uh, conditions, um, the COVID-19. So yeah, they do have Kalmig in it. Is Saraswati Rashtam a good source for Brahmi? Yeah, it's a great one. Um, just because uh, if it is Sarastarishta, remember that it is also a fermented um, formula, right? Uh, it's a liquid uh, which is fermented. So, and uh, if you have Sarastarishta with gold in it, um, it is um, even better for anxiety and depression or for the energy wise. But make sure that if you're a Pitta person, not to do it for too long. Okay, and also because it's fermented, so um, it has some sugar um, in it. Um, uh, element in it. So you, if you're diabetic or if you have, uh, you know, glucose tolerance uh, is high, so you uh, uh, is low, so you may want to be limiting it to a short period, not for too long. Oil pulling, should we do it before brushing teeth or after? After is best. You brush your teeth and then you do the oil pulling and then you gargle. Is the Yashta Madhi Madhu same as Jati Madh? Yes, Jest Madhu. Any suggestions where we can get Trikattu and Hinga Vastak? Not yeah, available in Amazon. Uh, as I said, uh, I use Banyan Botanicals um, and also um, uh, Atreya Herbs have it, but I, I think Banyan Botanicals have the single herbs uh, in plenty, so you can definitely find it there. Um. What can we give for kids of five and eight years old for constipation? So it's like a, it's a general question, I guess. And for that, it is difficult to answer. It's more like a specific uh, condition and problem. So in general, it is good to give a little bit of trifala with some uh, ghee mixed with ghee or just harad. Uh, harad is good. Um, for eight and 10 years old, you can use a little bit of castor um, capsules here, but I think try the trifala. Uh, with a little bit of ghee 
or just a hurried. But I think this this needs a little bit more uh, details to see like what the Agni is and uh, maybe a question that I can probably take later on if they have any. Yeah, space. can you can you just post your uh, email on the on the chat so that if they have questions they can come to you. Oh, uh, that maybe was we can have Bharti ji come back. Um, yes, yes, I think we should do that because we had a limit of hundred on this line. So okay. I know. So I don't know. I'm going to leave Gauraji to finish up the meeting. <laughs> Bharti ji, so I you know we'll wrap up. There's a few more questions. We'll you can send all your questions to community at uh, Indus here. It might be better uh, uh, if you send us the question. We can we can send them all to Bharti ji and yeah. maybe when we have you back, if we request you to come back and uh, when yeah, you back, we can uh, we can uh, uh, you know ha answer some of those questions. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, yeah, please do send the questions, and I'll, and I think I'll uh, I'm I don't know if I can share here or because there's so many chats going on, it will be lost in between. Do you want me to send yeah. it to you on your? Yeah, you, you can just you know just send it to to me, and I'll be making that. Lalaji has it, right? So it's all good. Uh, to okay. everyone who wants the recording, uh, when the recording comes in, we'll put it up on YouTube and put the link on the Hindu CI website. You have the link. Uh, Somewhere on this chat, but just go to Hindu CI and go to the the online online video library, and in there you're going to find this class. And Bharti ji, uh, when we we maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, would you you know check your calendar and see if, when you can come back? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Okay. Any kind, of, yeah. As I said any kind of uh, help or information that you need to help during this situation, I'm really willing to do that. And thank you again for a great opportunity to share and to uh, be part of your community as well. Thank you, thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to close the bridge now. For the questions that are left over, we'll have her back again. Thank yeah. you.